Now that's all right for me. Let's give God some praise. Come on, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's give him some praise. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be standing up here. Let's give him some praise. All right, I only have 10 minutes. I only have 10 minutes, so let me get right to the point. I'm preaching from a subject, first giving honor to God who's the head of my life, my pastors, uh, this great church minister and elders, and everybody that's in their respective places. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for giving me the assignment for this inspirational moment. Father God, use me as you desire to use me, Lord. Decrease me and increase you. Every anti-Christian Christ spirit in this place, Lord, I speak over it right now, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your blessing. In your name, Jesus' name, amen. I'm speaking from a question today, and it says, who am I? I, I don't know. I haven't been saved all my life, and when I was in the streets or as the older people say, when I was in the world. But when I was in the world, I thought I knew who I was. I made up a persona of who I was. My, my name was Memphis. I went around the streets, I was Memphis. I was really having an identity crisis. So I really asked God when I got saved, for real saved, who am I? So God began to speak to me. He took me to 1 Peter 2, 4 and 9. It says, you are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And, it, and you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more? You are his holy priests through the mediation of Jesus Christ, who offers spiritual sacrifices that pleases God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Seven says, yes, you who trust him recognize the honor that God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey God's word. And so they meet the fate that was planned for them. But you are not like that. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. How many of us are God's very own possession? He loved us so much that he now says, you're my son or you're my daughter. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he had called you out of the darkness into this wonderful light. Now, four says you're coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people but he was chosen by God for great honor. Most of us cannot identify with that in church. We were rejected in some way, whether it was our family, whether it was our friends, whether it was our parents, we were rejected. Some of us was rejected so to the point that they said, I cursed the day you were even born. But God said, not so. He said, you were chosen for a great honor. We're told all the time we don't, we're not good enough. But God said, you're chosen for a great honor. And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more? You are his holy priest. Through the resurrection of Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that pleases God. Now, God has made us into living stones or living testimonies. We are now his official spokesperson here on the earth. Jesus did all, God did all of this just so how he could show us how special we really were. Therefore, you are offering spiritual sacrifices that please God. What do I mean by spiritual sac sacrifices? You are willing to give up your own desires, your own wants, your own advancements, just to advance the kingdom of God. Some of us thought we were going to be so successful and rich and billionaires by the time we reached 30. But God said, nah. I got some other plans for you. There's a place in Orlando that's called Christian Family that I'm going to bring into existence. So because I'm bringing that place into existence, I need you to hold up a couple moments. I need you to show someone else how much I loved you. So therefore, I have to now place in you what I, I showed Christ. And what I showed Christ was that he was for a great honor. 
Now, in verse 6, it goes back to the Old Testament, which is Isaiah 2 and 8. I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chose for great honor. And anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Meaning that if you believe that God said it about you, you trust in his word, then you will. Who will? The believer will never be made ashamed because you are willing to trust God at his word. Now, the cornerstone they're talking about in verse 6 is Christ. Now, going to verse 7, it says, by you who trust him or you who trust Christ recognize that God, the honor God has given him. However, there are some of you who do not believe he is who God said he is. Just like they didn't believe who God said you are. They rejected you. And by rejecting you, they're really rejecting God. They're really rejecting Jesus. Now back to the stone. The builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Hold on a second. This was the very people that Jesus was talking to or the very people that were supposed to be welcoming him into the earth. It's just like you. When you get saved, then your friends begin to talk about you. Oh, she thinks she all that. Oh, he think he all that. No, it's just that you've now understood that you're a part of a royal family. And some things when you're royal, you can't touch. Some things when you become royal, you can't be involved in. Some things you can't even... I remember there were times in class where my friends would be acting a certain way and I just couldn't find myself to act that way. And I was like, well, I'm not in the in crowd. No, God said, no, you, you're royal. I, I can't let you do that. I can't allow you to do that. Some things I got caught up in because I was royalty. I thought God was punishing me, but really he was saving me. He was saving me for some things that I didn't want to get involved in. But he said, because you're royal, and some things I just got to keep you from. It wasn't because I wasn't cool enough. It wasn't because I couldn't hang with the best of them. I couldn't shake and rock and roll with the best of them. It was because I was royalty. Now, back to the scripture says, now he's the, he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. And they stumble because they do not obey God's word. So they meet the fate that was planned for them. In other words, the very people who mistreat you now have to recognize that God works in your behalf. They now have to recognize that God is on your side. They now have to recognize that you are who God said you were. They now have to recognize that they can no longer just say, oh, that's just so-and-so. He ain't. No, he's blessed and highly favored. They now have to recognize who you really are. Now, in closing, remember who you are. Remember who God called you to be. I understand there are times in our lives where we may forget or be, be discouraged. It is what God called us to be. We must not forget that God has not forgotten us in this season. This is the year of perfection. It's not over yet. The, the season is just now really beginning. This is the season that God said he's going to take you to another dimension. In the world, they, they go after diamonds. The thing I understand about diamonds is when you first get them, they're not precious stones. They're just minerals. Now, to make this diamond, it had to go through some things. To make this diamond, it had to go through some pressure. To make this diamond, it had to go through some fire. And even after they dig the diamond out of the stone, it's still not even what they call a quality diamond. It still has to go through some cutting. It still has to go through some bleeding. It still has to become broken. Then after it does all that, they place it in the middle of the ring and they say, that's a Leo diamond. Why is that a Leo diamond? Because it said the quality is just so high that it has its own template in its own place in the diamond store. You said, you know, I, I don't want that. I need a Leo diamond. What are you saying? I need the best diamond in the place. So what is God saying about you? You're the best diamond in this place. See, see now the old folks say it like this is he brings you out of darkness, the word says, into a wonderful light, but my grandma would say into this marvelous light. Why is it called marvelous? Because bling, bling, I'm shining everywhere I go. Bling, bling, I'm shining everywhere I go. Every time they look at me, I'm shining. Every time they want to say something, it's too bright for them to see. They trying to think I'm doing something that I said, well, God be for me. you with this even though we're going through difficult difficult moments in our lives and things may not be lining up the way we think they should come on just remember bring me. I'm who God called me to be
Somebody give God praise in this place.